Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about how you might obtain a conscious state from a brain state, which would mean finding some sort of translation system between the two. I am assuming a functional view of consciousness in this video, which I argue for in my book, provisionally titled Stuff and Consciousness. Everything here is explained in more detail in my book. OK, ordinary human brains and functional equivalent brains made from different materials such as silicon chips are only equivalent if you look at them or interpret them in a certain way. There are differences between them and only if you use the correct interpretation do they become equivalent. But there are still different possible interpretations even where the normal brain and the silicon brain are equivalent. So by accepting functionalism you are accepting that consciousness is dependent on a particular interpretation of a brain state. So consciousness can be described as the realisation of an interpretation of a physical state, even though it is not obvious how it is realised. But how do we find our interpretation system to unlock the consciousness of a brain? Can we find it by viewing the brain in isolation? Or do we need the context? Daniel Dennett, in his book Kinds of Minds from 1996, argues that it is all about context because there is no such thing as intrinsic intentionality or meaning. So from page 51, and I quote, But what of the states and acts of those minds? What endows them with their intentionality? One popular answer is to say that these mental states and acts have meaning because they themselves, marvellously enough, are composed in a sort of language, the language of thought, mentalese. This is a hopeless answer, dot dot dot. It is hopeless as an answer to the question we posed, for it merely postpones the question. Let there be a language of thought. Now whence comes the meaning of its terms? How do you know what the sentences in your language of thought mean? End quote. And then on pages 52 and 53, quote, The brain is an artefact, and it gets whatever intentionality its parts have from their role in the ongoing economy of the larger system of which it is a part, or in other words, from the intentions of its creator, Mother Nature, otherwise known as the process of evolution by natural selection." End quote. It seems that what Dennett is saying is that you could have two identical brains that have different conscious experiences due to having been derived differently, because the interpretation system you apply to a brain is partly based on derivation. Donald Davidson explicitly spells this out in his 1987 paper, Knowing One's Own Mind, and I quote, Suppose lightning strikes a dead tree in a swamp. I am standing nearby. My body is reduced to its elements, while entirely by coincidence, and out of different molecules, the tree is turned into my physical replica. My replica, the swamp man, moves exactly as I did. According to its nature, it departs the swamp, encounters and seems to recognise my friends and appears to return their greetings in English. It moves to my house and seems to write articles on radical interpretation. No one can tell the difference. But there is a difference. My replica can't recognise my friends. It can't recognise anything, since it never cognised anything in the first place. Dot, dot, dot. Indeed, I don't see how my replica can be said to mean anything by the sounds it makes, nor to have any thoughts. End quote. According to Davidson, according, although the swamp man is physically identical to a specific human, it would not have any thoughts, so obviously no conscious thoughts. But does it really make sense to say that swamp man would not have the same conscious thoughts as Davidson? They are physically identical, so their conscious states would have to be identical, unless there is a non-physical memory given to an object by its history. But if we are taking the consciousness brain link seriously, then consciousness should be fixed by the physical makeup of the brain, regardless of derivation. The only conclusion we can draw is that derivation does not have any relevance in determining conscious states, which would mean that Swamp Man would have exactly the same consciousness as Davidson. But derivation was supposed to be a way of determining which interpretation system is responsible for consciousness. Without it, we are left with the problem that there are many possible interpretation systems that we could apply to the brain, and there does not seem to be an obvious way of deciding which one is correct. Maybe there are multiple conscious minds per brain. You might think that the, the idea of a conscious mind being an interpretation of a brain state, and indeed just one of many possible interpretations, as a bizarre direction for me to be going in. 
But this is forced upon us if we are taking a functional view of consciousness. And this is exactly the problem that Dennett and Davidson have been discussing, even if they've not been quite so explicit. So I will continue. In his book The Conscious Mind from 1996, David Chalmers states that it is logically possible for there to exist a being physically identical to him but with different conscious experiences, such as seeing blue where he sees red. But he believes that each brain does in fact have only one of the many possible conscious minds because of psychophysical laws. Chalmers says that these are natural laws rather than logical laws and could be different in different universes, leading to the possibility of physically identical beings with different conscious experiences. Chalmers' idea of there being different possible psychophysical laws seems to agree with the idea that I have presented about there being multiple possible minds per brain, except that he has his laws to keep one mind per brain. However, I do not think that the two ideas are coming from the same direction. Chalmers views the brain as a system functioning a specific way, and from what I understand, he considers there to be one interpretation of its functioning, or one relevant one at least. Chalmers thinks that even with this one interpretation, there are still many possible minds, such as the one that sees blue where he sees red. My point is that there are many ways of interpreting the brain's functioning, and as a result, many possible minds. In fact, I would not agree with his conclusion that for a specific interpretation, there would be more than one possible mind. Each mind is simply the one realisation of a specific interpretation. You cannot divorce the functional state from the conscious state associated with it, particularly if you are going by a functional theory of consciousness, which Chalmers is. So you cannot simply decide that two that identical functional states can actually result in two different conscious states for two different people, even if they are in different universes, just on the basis that it seems plausible at first sight. When Dennett is attempting to disqualify qualia in Consciousness Explained from 1991, he makes the point that by inverting your colour qualia, as Chalmers suggests, you would create more problems as your reactive dispositions to the colours have changed as well. What a colour looks like is not some independent, standalone phenomenon. Dennett argues that by playing with your colour experiences, you cannot help but affect other experiences as well. If you vary your colour qualia, you would also have to vary other qualia to compensate for your change in how you relate to those qualia, and then more again to compensate for that change, and so on. It seems that you would end up, metaphorically speaking, rotating your whole conscious experience as one, leaving it unchanged. The conscious mind is simply a reflection of the fu functional architecture of the brain. It has no independently variable properties of its own. If we take the view that there is one standard way to interpret the brain, then it seems that there is only one mind resultant from it, and no other possible mind that sees blue where you would see red. A different mind requires a different interpretation. But it does still seem that we have multiple possible interpretations, leaving the possibility of multiple minds per brain. It may initially seem a violation of Occam's razor to talk about many minds being associated with the brain, but if having just one consciousness means having extra arbitrary laws to determine which interpretation system is correct, then I would see that as more of a violation. But the fact that there may be many conscious minds arising from your brain is not necessarily as bad as you may think. Many of the minds will come from frankly bizarre interpretations and will probably be best described as conscious noise. After weeding these out and any other unreasonable interpretations such as those that do not view a functionally equivalent silicon chip brain as equivalent to your own brain, we may be left with very little. It may be that there is only one interpretation and one consciousness left that is worth talking about. In that case, it would not be worth worrying about any extra conscious minds that your brain may have. They would just be the conscious equivalent of hot air. This would leave the possibility of there being a universal method of finding the consciousness of a brain without worrying about anything outside the brain itself.